All right. Well, we are here today with Don Bentley. Don is a Mankato native. That's a great thing. And also the executive director of the Minnesota Fringe Festival with an excited dog in the background. I don't yeah. know if that's yours, but uh, she's going to talk to us a little bit about the virtual Fringe Festival this year. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on, Mike. Um, I'm so excited that we were able to do a pandemic pivot and still have some thing of a festival. Of course, earlier this year in late April, we canceled our festival, which normally draws about 40,000 attendees and over a thousand artists in 11 days in the Minneapolis area. And uh, due to COVID-19, we had to shut that down and put ourselves really in financial peril and started a, a massive fundraising campaign trying to raise $100,000 so that we could come back next year. Um, with the help of a PPP uh, funding through the CARES Act, I was able to bring my staff back, which we were all furloughed on May 1st, um, but we were able to bring them back and then do a pandemic pivot to create the virtual festival. And the virtual festival has two parts. Uh, one is free nightly performances from one to three artists every single night of the regular fringe time. So that's going to be July 30th to August 9th. And then there's also something called the Digital Hub. And in that Digital Hub, you have uh, some pre-recorded performances, some that have been in our fringe, some that have been in other fringes, and some live performances and some timed recorded performances. So a little bit of everything. Uh, in total, in the last two and a half months since we started planning this, we have more than 70 artists, and I'm sure it's gonna be more than 100 performances. Uh, throughout those 11 days, July 30th to August 9th. And the Digital Hub performances are accessible if you buy a fringe button, just like in your background and like you're wearing on your shirt for $5. So that, uh, that donation to the fringe gets you a button to commemorate this year, uh, but it also gets you access to exclusive content. So it's also part of our fundraising campaign to do this. And the lineup includes artists from the Twin Cities area, greater Minnesota, around the country. And we have a couple of artists, um, one of them doing a live performance from other countries. So it's going to be pretty robust and various types of performances. Like I said, some are recorded, so you'll see full ensembles on stage. And some are going to be live performances in small groups or solo or on Zoom meetings or Zoom webinars. So a variety of platforms as well. Okay. And you mentioned Greater Mankato, and of course that's representing Greatest Mankato, or Greatest yeah. Minnesota, which is Mankato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, Fringe Favorites, Literally Entertainment, are going to be, their Mankato natives, and they're going to be putting a show in the Digital Hub. It was a show that uh, won last year, uh, award last year, and um, it was very well received, as were all of our Mankato shows in the last couple of years. They certainly are always giving a good representation from my hometown. Okay, and how can people get signed up? I assume is, is the uh, registration open now? Yes, if you're an artist and you want to be in the Digital Hub, you can still register all the way up until the day the festival starts. And so you just go to minnesotafringe.org and under virtual festival, you'll see an application or registration link for artists. For audiences who wanna check it out and are maybe a little apprehensive about how this online thing works, we have a virtual festival participation page that sort of lays it out. And we are working on FAQs so that you can understand the various platforms. Because Some artists will be on Facebook Live, some will be on Twitch, some will be on Zoom and a whole bunch of other platforms. So we're putting together a little simple FAQ that will show you, do I have to pay for the platform? Do I have to have an account? Um, do I have to know how to log in? So that you can prepare in advance. And then also our nightly fringe schedule, those live performances that are only 30 minutes long because Zoom fatigue is a real thing. <laughs> Uh, those live performances, that schedule's already up, so you can start to plan what you need to see for sure, um, including a group of fringe artists that if you're a fringe festival goer and you've been going for a few years, I'm sure you're going to recognize this group. They're called Adventurous Artists, and it's a conglomeration of festival artists that are really doing a, a fundraiser to help us with our fundraising goal on July 31st. So that's going to be like a whole variety show. Okay. Now, did I see that this is that Minnesota Fringe is leading the way as far as virtual festivals? 
Well, I have been in contact with other festival leaders around Minnesota, um, other USA Fringe Festival leaders around the country, and I've attended a few World Fringe meetings. So there are fringes all over the all over the world, and I've been learning what other people have done. We're not the first to pivot, that's for sure. Some people did it on very short notice, um, and some have had success, and some have said, "Hey, we tried this, don't do that," and we've just been really sharing with one another. Uh, best practices and and how to simplify it. We're all working under duress and smaller staffs than we normally would during a festival season. So it's been interesting to sort of craft this virtual festival for this year that's going to work for us and our small staff. But I really do hope that the digital hub is a permanent part of our festival. Mm -hmm. It's just really exciting to see audiences from other states get to participate in our fringe and artists from other areas of the world get to share their work with our audiences. Okay, because I know you've always been working, you've been wanting to get to greater, greater Minnesota with the festival itself, and now you're just jumping right over that and going to uh, international. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can't wait till the days when we can gather again inside the theater, and now is not that time, but I still have a vision someday of having satellite light fringes, you know, that maybe the weekend before the big festival in the Twin Cities were in Mankato or the weekend after we're in St. Cloud or something like that. I, I still have a vision that we could incorporate more performing arts in greater Minnesota because we get some really great shows from all over the place. And the Twin Cities is a great big theater community, but Minnesota in general is a great arts supporting community and we should be everywhere. It's really Minnesota's fringe, right? I, I right. think I've told you before, I want to put the Minnesota back in Minnesota fringe. There you go. So any information that people want to find will be or will soon be at minnesotafringe.com. That's where they can go for all of their information. Yeah, minnesotafringe.org. And, and if you are also on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, we're at uh, whatever the lead in is, twitter.com. MN Fringe or Facebook MN Fringe. Uh, so we're putting up as much information because we know this isn't just our pivot, it's our audience pivot as well. And we're trying to be as clear and simple as possible and as transparent. Um, but we're, we're working really hard to bring a great festival. All right. Anything else you want people to know before we go? Well, you know, a button is a, a great way to remember this year, and it's also a great way to support us, and it's only $5. Um, at the moment you buy your button, either now or before uh, or after July 30th, you'll be put into the digital hub on July 30th and have access to all that con content. And then we'll send you the button and you can wear it with pride. And of course, when we come back to the theater spaces, which I certainly hope we do in the next year or so, buttons usually get you discounts to different theaters around town. Oh, wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, Don Bentley, Mankato's own, uh, taking charge. Are you going to have an uneventful third year, I hope? you. The first year was yes, last year. <laughs> oh, no. So this is my fourth fringe already. Oh, oh, and wow. it's, yeah, and it's never been just another fringe. It's, um, it's really something. But I'm inspired by all the creative people that I get to work with. I am not a theater artist myself, but I'm certainly inspired by the creativity and the amount of work that people have gone into still making art and sharing it with people, it, it's inspired me. And, and I'll tell you, Mike, as soon as we got back to planning this festival and really focusing on our mission work to connect adventurous artists and adventurous audiences, I was completely re-energized. And before that, it was certainly, you know, a sad time for the entertainment industry. It's, it's a tough time in the arts right now, but I've been completely re-energized by what I've seen other people do and I'm so happy that we're able to bring this to the people of Minnesota. Okay, great chance to energize and uh, recharge our batteries, minnesotafringe.org. Thank you, Dawn, for, for joining me, and we'll get the word out to greater Minnesota. All right, thank you, Mike. Thanks.